Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders from within the digital infrastructure space. Speaking of thought leaders, I've got one right over here to my right. This is my, my, my friend. Can we say friends now? I think so. I it's think been... Four interviews? Three it's, interviews, it's something been, like it's, that. It's been, it's been a couple of interviews now. Miranda Gardner. Miranda is the di uh, executive director of the iMasons Climate Accord. Miranda, welcome as always to JSA TV. Dean, nice to see you. Great Lovely to, see to you. be back and yeah. chatting with you again this Thank year. You. So yeah. thanks for having me. Absolutely. And the show, how's it going for you? Amazing. I mean, always so much energy in New York, obviously. Yeah. Uh, great vendors downstairs. Great debates going on. Yes. Whether it's about New York City or just... AI or digital infrastructure. I mean, you name it, it's yeah, here. Yeah. Obviously, yesterday, the iMasons event, packed house, the I Am Women event, you know, standing room only. Love so, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's always encouraging. Speaking of standing room only, I, I've been to this event uh, a number of times. It feels more crowded. I mean, and it, it's the same venue, but there just feels like there's more people here. There's, I've noticed this at a number of events lately. Cool. There seems to be an uptick in not only the interest mm -hmm. in what our industry is doing, but just actual attendance of new, new practitioners to the space. Yeah, so, yeah. Which is a great feeling because you do get a lot of opportunity to ask questions. I've run into a lot of students, so that next gen. So it's, work, so it's working. It is working. Right. No, that's that's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, Miranda, we got a lot to talk about. I'm going to jump right in. Uh, something I know that you're very passionate about. Um, uh, reducing the environmental impact in dense urban areas like New York City. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about uh, your uh, your involvement there? I mean, that goes, that, that goes way back. Dude. Are you way, like, yeah, I know. I know. How much time do we have? Uh, that goes, you know, I, I would say to my past life, of work that I was doing outside of digital infrastructure. And, you know, my background is in architecture, mm -hmm. is in sustainability. I have always had a focus on how we are more efficient, how we are more sustainable and what we're building. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to an area like New York, and what I appreciate about New York is the real passion New Yorkers have for maintaining that sense of history. Mm -hmm. You know, the we've talked about this before, like the most sustainable building is the one you don't have to build. It's yeah. already there. How do you repurpose it? And when we're talking about new technologies, when we're talking about AI, when we're talking about kind of the innovations that this industry is doing, mirroring that up is something that I think New Yorkers are, are quite passionate about, as, as are anyone who's here at the event. So generally speaking, and, and, I, and I love the point, um, the, the best infrastructure is the one that already exists, you know, making yeah. sure that we're, we're, we're ringing out the potential of all of the, the facilities that we have. And that probably doesn't just uh, stand for New York City, but, you know, in rural America, there might be abandoned factories, things like that, where, where you know, if I'm a data center developer, I might want to go in there and see what, what, what the possibilities are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, power infrastructure is there, yeah. some of the warehouses, uh, you know, along the grain belt. We've got, what else, transmission lines that are not being capitalized on. Again, a lot of this takes a little more time and effort because it's not like for like mm -hmm. in yeah. terms of the process loads that we have, or again, in terms of what we're looking for out of compute capacity, mm -hmm. but it's there. And it really is worth exploring, especially with front end delivery partners. And again, coming from the background that I have, yeah. one that I ask any owner operator to kind of engage in the conversation, whether it goes that way or not, mm -hmm. be the informed decision maker around yeah. it yeah. and know what the possibility is. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I got to believe based on even some of the, the panel discussions that I had uh, yesterday with one of your colleagues, uh, Santiago, you know, w when we were talking about that is uh, that it, it's it's actually a good entry into some of these markets as well. When, when we're saying, hey, look, you've got abandoned infrastructure right now yeah. that we might be able to make uh, the you know best use of. You know, it, it's a it's a it's a more sustainable, uh, I think, uh, community friendly story as well. Yeah, you just touched on it. I was going to say, and I'm sure Santiago talked about this too. Yeah, what can we do for community sustainability when there are places that feel like maybe they've been left behind uh -huh. by a you know a technology revolution or yeah, yeah. left behind by the industries that were there in the past? Can we bring that forward? Can we engage yeah. with those, you know, local businesses, with those, again, community engagement activists, you name it. They've got a lot of ideas. They've got a lot of bandwidth in terms of knowing the historical context. I mean, 
it goes on and on, it, right? It, it really, yeah. it really does. Uh, okay. Anyway, thank you for allowing me to go off. <laughs> no script problem. On that. Um, back to it though. You, and uh, I think every one of your answers to this point has had an energy component to it because yes, we it can't, is. we can't, <laughs> right? We cannot talk about AI. And we're going to talk about AI uh, without talking about energy consumption and sustainability. Where where is this all going, Miranda? I'm it, challenging is yeah. where it's going right yeah. now. I, where we're seeing it, you know, a lot of headwinds mm -hmm. uh, in the sustainability space. Whether it's the terminology ESG yeah. or net zero. Yeah. I mean, these are spaces where, or, or sorry, these are these are terms that right now are being politicized more than usual. Yep. Okay, yep. fair enough. Yep. There's still ways to do this, right? Uh, I have also seen a number of conversations now about what an energy transition looks like, but almost going backwards. You know, we have recently heard the drill baby drill sentiment. Yep. We have recently yep. heard that renewables are not going to be a focus of, mm -hmm. you know, even an economic value to somewhere like the U.S. Uh -huh. So again, for sustainability professionals, we have to approach this from what are all the options on the table? How do we look at this from the big picture? How do we look at this and know that something like nuclear is not coming on online right. for several years? It's not happening at the tomorrow. earliest, That's right. exactly. Yeah. And so to to kind of embrace that there are possibilities and opportunities and ones that we don't even know about. Who yeah. knows what the technology will yeah. look like in next year, even in six months from now? I mean, just take a look at solar panels. I mean, how much more efficient are they now, right? Right. Uh, so I, I, I find it to be a challenge, but not one that most of us in sustainability are not used to. We are familiar to getting up and having this fight yeah. pretty consistently, yeah. and, and we're excited to keep doing it. Well, continue that fight. It's, Thank it's, you. it's the good one, and we all <laughs> appreciate it very Thank much you. within the industry. Um, the iMason's Climate Accord, you focus on collective action. What is collective action? Well, a couple of things, I mean, a couple of things, and, I, and I'm glad we're talking about this yeah. now. If, if, for those who are watching, if you have not seen this, uh, we have finally launched what we consider to be our first cornerstone publication. Really, the foundation of the Climate Accord was a maturity model that Dean Nelson proposed almost three years ago, three years ago next month. <laughs> I was going to say next year, next that's, month, that's wild, um, yeah. about that intersection between energy, materials, and equipment. And in February of this year, we launched that publication. It's about 20, thank you, yeah. 20, 25 pages. It really is the passion of the ICA as a whole. So that's where collective action is. It was not just Miranda and Dean sat down and decided to do this. Dean and whom, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. It, it was not that. It really came from that idea. Last year, our consultant team, Brightworks, really kind of put the, the you know, outline together of it. Our working groups got in there, outlined from that outline, took all of that into the detailed examples, into the criteria that we need to look at for the maturity levels. Our governing body went back and looked at it. Our ICA members, the sustainability committee on the IMA. Sounds like I a mean, collective like, It me. went back and four. I mean, three rounds of review. We yeah. had something like over 600 comments. I mean, then we really did the due diligence to ensure, as I like to say, it's for the members by the members. I love it. This is coming from everyone who is involved and more so, and I'll just say thank you to them right now because something like that really is going to drive now, not only the people involved in the Climate Accord, but we're hearing this now from other sustainability, yeah. like-minded associations, the ones that we are in strategic alliances with, whether it's Open Compute or Green Building Initiative, uh, RICS out of the UK. I mean, these are the places where we are now reaching out and expanding how this can influence and how vice versa we can be a complement to the services or the teams that they have out there. Well said. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, honestly, Miranda, we uh, like we at JSA, no, but for, for real, uh, we at JSA, well, thank you. we we could not be more behind your effort and your passion uh, and and your direction. So uh, from from the the team back home at JSA, thank you very much for all of your work and thank you very much for for being with me today. I appreciate it. Always, thank you, JSA, and of course, Dean. Always have a good time chatting with you. So Absolutely. appreciate the time today. Thank you, thank you, Miranda, and thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you very soon. Soon.